So how many, in, in a perfect application, how many optimizer hints should there be? Ideally zero, right? Zero. What the f G'day everyone, Connor McDonald here. I'm talking with Maria Colgan. We're in Rome. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. There we go. That's the two worst Italian accents you'll hear uh, <laughs> for some time. But we're here um, for the Italian Oracle User Group. We've been to Milan. We've been to Rome as well. That's where we're here today. You're talking about optimizer hints. I wanted to grill you on optimizer hints, even though oh, I haven't sat in on the session. Is that okay? Yeah, let's do it. Um, okay. I started off with zero optimizer hints. Mm -hmm. Is that realistic, do you reckon? I think it is, uh, as long as you've got a reasonably written SQL um, and you've made a huge effort to supply the optimizer with as much information as you possibly can. So that means you've got um, accurate statistics, you might have even gone to the trouble of doing extended stats or histograms to give that extra additional pieces of information to the optimizer. On histograms, I did a talk on optimizer in terms of upgrading to 12 and beyond. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the things I thought was really cool was hybrid histograms, uh, which we won't bore the audience with because there's plenty <laughs> of content out there. I've seen some customers that even though they've moved to 12, they've still got some height balanced histograms floating around. Um, why would that be? So either they haven't gathered stats since they've moved to the latest version, um, so perhaps they've locked the statistics or something like that, or it's because of the method they're using to gather their statistics. Uh, so they want to be, of course, using the DBMS stats exactly. package and you want to let it all be auto. So you've got to be using auto sample size in order to get those new histograms. So people who have older scripts, as I said, that they may have hard coded some magic in there around yeah. the sample size. Estimate one, estimate it, 10. Or oh, it, yeah. you're being generous, my friend. It's normally like a zero dot one <laughs> zero dot two kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so if you're doing any of that kind of magic, it may be time to just come back to the defaults as best you can and get into the auto and then you'll be able to, to get the new types of histograms, which are far more powerful. Um, plus, if you do that, you can also get the more buckets in the histograms. Probably the number one enhancement request for the Oracle database since histograms arrived on the scene is that I can give me more buckets. Um, and so you don't get any of those goodies unless you conform to auto sample size. Sure. The buckets bumps up to 1,000 or 2,000, is it? It's, uh, yeah, 248. So 2,048 is okay. the, the maximum buckets. By default, when we build it, we're still doing uh, the 255 cool. uh, or 254 buckets. But even with the height balance, because we don't allow multi the same value to be multiple endpoints, you don't really need the extra buckets. But for some people, there is always that you know corner case where it may be necessary. So you, you have that option. I'm the same. I, for me, my advice when people upgrade is take every piece of DBMS stats customization you grabbed, rip it all out. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I still see people on 18, 19, etc., and they're still not getting. I'm not the. Well, well, I'm not sure what our official internal name is, <laughs> but the the really cool distinct values optimization, as opposed to sorts from hell. Right. It's like you know the actual you know one pass through the table. We still get really good distinct values because they've got you know method op this, they've sample percent, and and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, and I think people have made, some people anyway, have made a career out of complicating the stats gather procedure with a lot of this. I, hocus pocus sounds a bit strong, but to me, it's, it's very corner case, edge case kind of solutions. If you can, the ideal situation would be get yourself to the new release, so to 18 or 19. Obviously, 19 being the long-term support release, I think, is where most people are going. Make sure you've backed up whatever stats you're bringing with you. Once you're comfortable that you've got a good environment on 19, then you could even enable pending stats so that they're not there. You're not going to break the application or anything, but take away all of that customization, gather a new set of statistics, and then just try it out in a single session. You can set optimizer use pending stats equals to true. Single session, try out those new stats for your critical SQL statements, make sure everything is good. And then why not enable them uh, for everybody and then start on that path? But you're right, there, there's a ton of customization that's going to cause people drama. In terms of gathering stats, we get things on Ask Tom saying, why is it so slow? Why did it take so long? And sometimes a lot of that's just process. They're, they're like, yes, we're doing a compute across every table every <laughs> night. You know. and, and also I've seen people who are unaware that we actually have the scheduler job or the automatic tasks that do yeah. it anyway. So they've written their own scheduler jobs 
to effectively reinvent the wheel. So sometimes it's process, but sometimes people have big stuff. Yeah. What are your thoughts on using something like a standby? So gathering stats on a standby, which is close enough to copy a production, yeah. and then slamming them into production. Is, are there any risks to that, or do you think that's a good way of offloading resource? So, no, I think if you can offload the resource anyway, it's one of the reasons we do the nightly job during the windows, the maintenance windows that we believe are off cycle, right? So that we could use more resources. If you can, if you have a, like an actual standby, so not a dev test environment exactly. because I've seen very dodgy results <laughs> in that respect, right? Um, but if you've got a true standby situation where you could gather stats there and then propagate them to a production environment, absolutely, as long as it's a representative set of data that matches what you've got in production, you can absolutely do that. But you've got other options. You can do a concurrent stats gather where you can, if you do have capacity, you can have multiple threads be gathering stats uh, rather than in the kind of single process way we do it by default. You can allow us to open it up and, and use a lot more resources either through parallel execution or through concurrency. So you have options to speed it up. But you're right, sometimes on a really large data set, it'd just be safer to do it offline, but not an issue, yeah. Cool. For anyone watching, don't forget those maintenance windows because we do it overnight and weekends. And it's funny, I've worked at a few places where the weekend is the yeah, the retailer, so the weekend is huge for them. And yet, by default, remember this, we've gone the weekend. It's quiet. Yeah. Let's <laughs> let's smash away that maintenance. And yeah, so look at your windows, DBA scheduler, auto task windows or scheduler yeah, windows. With scheduler windows. Um, yeah. And adjust them if appropriate. Yeah, no, and that's it, right? You can do it through EM, you can do it, do it through the PL SQL package. You can even say, you know what, Wednesday night we do our own batch jobs, no stats. You can turn it on and off. Uh, you have a huge amount of flexibility, but I think the initial thing most people think of is, oh, I just need to turn the whole thing off uh, and write my own, as you said. And then you're into custom script hell because no one knows why you chose those values, and so no one's willing to undo it. So if you can use the auto job just at your own convenience. It's like everyone's got the script where it has like to do. That's the four worst letters, like to do. This is, you know, I'm not sure why we did this, but we'll have to have a look at it later. Yeah. Swinging back to optimizer hints, you, you said possibly zero. I have, I have a different idea. I have, a, I have the concept of what I call dangerous and safe hints. So my idea of a safe hint is anything that, let me backtrack. <laughs> I like the optimizer as being a friend. And, and if you give your friends gifts, they generally treat you nicely. Yeah. And one of those gifts is good stats, as we just spoke yeah. about. But, but I think there are some hints that actually are giving the optimizer more information. Mm. Um, so you might be saying, I know that you know, the best way to always run this five table join is, even though the predicates might be all over the shop, look, that's the table I want you to start with. I know uh -huh. that that's gonna be my winner because I'm always you know, it's the reducing it. Or yeah, yeah, exactly. So things like leading hints, I reckon they're good because you're really telling optimizer, You've got your own stats, and here's some extra. Mm. My definition of a dangerous hint is anything which is robbing from your friend. You know, <laughs> like you're saying an index hint, because what you're saying is you don't get full, you don't get fast full scan, yeah, yeah. etc. Do you do you think that's a good idea, or do you think we always start with nothing and then, you know? So I'm always concerned trying on giving advice with hints, um, because most of us are guilty, myself included of when I'm trying to fix a SQL statement, adding just the hints I need this moment to get that plan. And my concern about saying, oh, these ones are safe and those ones are not, is that they're all gonna behave the same, which is at the moment with the current environment that we've got, this version of the database, this set of statistics, this set of data distribution, that one hint gets me the plan I want. But there's zero guarantees that if any of those elements change, that that one hint will get you back to the plan that you really want. So I'm reluctant to agree with you on the safe and not so safe, but I am aware that obviously there's some of these things that really do need to be done, right? There are certain hints that we're gonna to need to use at some point depending on our environment. And you're right, those ones where you're kind of giving a nudge in the right direction to say, well, you know what? I know maybe for whatever reason our data model doesn't have all the constraints in play, but I know that the predicate on this table will reduce the volume of rows, so starting there isn't a bad idea. But if you do do something like that, if you are going to use the leading hint, um, give all the information that you've got. We are often guilty of 
giving just a subset of the information. So start with this table and good luck and God bless on the other four, you know, at your will, pick which, you know. And inevitably that leads the optimizer down the garden path to a certain degree because today it's picking, you know, these tables in this order, but tomorrow it may, because by the way, a hint is a directive. So as long as it's valid, we're gonna believe everything you say. So you say, I've got to start with this table, but you haven't told me where I go next and what, where I go after that and so on. So if you are going to do a leading hint or something like that, I'd strongly recommend that you give this, the whole story to the optimizer. It'll give you a greater chance of reproducing that plan going forward. I agree. You mentioned that concept of, I need to fix, you know, that running bad, I need to fix that now yeah. because the yeah. phones are running off the hook. <laughs> yeah, I, I often think of hints as like triage. It's like, you know, you're a medical doctor, that guy's bleeding out, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the spurts yeah. are coming out, you know, stop the bleeding, mm-hmm. and, and then we'll work on a, a cure because we don't want the patient to be dead, you know, the ah, sequel. No. So, yeah. so if I've slapped in a bunch of hints as triage, so I've, I've solved the problem, now I can go off and look at statistics, are they missing, etc. but let's say all that's fine, it's just one of those queries with 37,000 predicates, <laughs> um, you know, data model up the wazoo, and um, those hints are sort of currently acquired. I've done the triage, what should I do next? How do I, how do I fix this SQL so I don't have to have my 47 hints in there? Ideally, my advice is you take advantage of SQL plan management at that point, right? And you capture that plan as the known plan. Ideally, you then map that to the non-hinted version of the SQL statement. So I'm getting my hinted plan, the plan that I've worked on and done the triage on, um, but I'm not requiring the patient to walk around with a Band-Aid on okay. constantly. Um, I'm going to ideally fix them, as you said, and that becomes the baseline plan going forward. The reason I suggest that approach is that it gives the optimizer an opportunity, let's say we upgrade, there's a new transformation or there's something that would actually improve the plan again. If SQL plan management is in play, it will allow the optimizer to find that additional plan but not use it until it's been validated to be better than our existing hint-driven plan. And remember, of course, SQL plan management, it's free. And there's a huge concern or confusion over this, basically due to a sentence that was a little bit misleading in the documentation way back in 11. It is free and it's in standard edition. So there's no excuses not to use it. Uh, and it's just that little bit safer because what I've noticed and what I say in the, in the talk, in the session, is that once the hint goes in, no one wants to take it no. out because inevitably we don't really know why it went in other than probably somebody was bleeding and we That's wanted right. to, to stop it. So yeah, it's better That's right. to do, 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 do we want to <laughs> <laughs> yeah. rip the band-aid? So let's not work that metaphor too, <laughs> too hard, it'll get gross. Once we get into things like people putting in hints and SQL plan management and stuff, in fact, I'll say one of the things about SPM I like is on some of our autonomous databases like the Data Warehouse, then we're quite guarded with allowing what hints people are allowed to use. Mm-hmm. Some of them are just silently, we just say, not allowed to be touched. Where SQL plan management is always going to be floating around. It's, it's, yeah. it's really our go-to model for, for locking in plans. Oh, in fact, so we're using it ourselves. You know, so this is another example of Oracle having to drink their own Kool-Aid exactly. to a certain degree. And Autonomous Database has been fantastic for this. Currently, on our shared infrastructure, we're running on 18C. And that means everybody is going to have to go to 19C on that service in the next couple of months. And we are doing automatic SQL plan management for all existing databases so that when they do upgrade, we are getting a new version of the optimizer and so on, that there won't be any plan regressions. So uh, having to drink our own champagne, as we say, uh, has meant that we're going to utilize all of our own technology. And I would strongly recommend if you're doing it now yourself uh, on premise or in um, customer managed cloud services, take advantage of it. Just grab all the plans you've got now. You don't even have to enable it. Just have that safety net, the parachute if something goes wrong of what is my plan today so that when you are upgrading to 19C that you take advantage of it. But yeah, we have it for you in autonomous right now too. Um, I'll put a link in the description in the docs uh, to the docs on that, but the keywords you wanna be searching for are SPM capture and SPM pack because the way we do it is we capture baselines uh, we pack them into a table, you export impact it into your target database and unpack them. So search for pack or capture, um, but I'll put a link to the docs as well, so for people to do that. Cool. 10053, bone of contention. Some people think it's the greatest thing ever. Some people think you really shouldn't be messing around in, in, in internals. I, I'm not sure where, I, I sit paper, perhaps on, on both sides of the fence. One of the things I was curious about is with 10053 is, I've always said people shouldn't go in 10046 trace. Mm. Not the trace file, because it's gobbledygook. But we invented a really cool tool called TKProf. Yep. 
because you give someone, you give 10 people a trace file, you'll get 10 different interpretations. <laughs> Take that trace file, put it through TK Prof, and probably all 10 will almost agree because it pretty much says that's what the problem is, <laughs> that's why it's a problem, etc. Do you think maybe there's a place for a TK Prof for 10053? So it's funny you should say that. So many moons ago when I became the Optimizer PM, the very first thing I marched into the head of, of the Optimizer development team's office and said, you need to teach me how to read a 10053 trace so that we can then build some kind of an uh, interpretation tool and stuff. And that none of the developers seemed keen to teach me this. And eventually, after months of uh, working with them and triaging problems, I realized, you know what? Not all of them know how to read it either because <laughs> With tracing in Oracle, right, the developers, when they're building new functionality, new transformations, all that kind of stuff, we dump everything we possibly think might be useful into the trace files. Not always the case, as you said, right? TK Prof really um, pulls out just the really relevant things to do performance tuning enhancements and stuff. So could we do one for the 10053 trace? There's not a great appetite, honestly, okay. internally to do it, but I, if you look in 19C and, and you start to see more and more information being given to you in the notes note section sensor. underneath the execution plan, and I think the div optimizer team is more keen to share whatever they think is relevant on a statement by statement basis there rather than trying to put a, a TK prof on top of the 10053 trace mainly because it's just an animal and <laughs> having to work, build an engine that's going to um, iterate to, through that. Have to support it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah is, is going to be pa painful. What I learned while I was working with them is there's certain keywords that I can search for in that trace file. So used hints or SPM uh, that I search Query for. Through before to, transformation. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> that I search for so that I can find what I need. I'm the same, I'm like, final query. That's the like, because I, cause I wonder, after all the transformations, what did you do? Anyway, we're gonna wrap it up. We're about to get booted out of this room because the <laughs> session's about to start. Uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll be off eating pasta and drinking grappa for the rest of the day, and working under the premise of working. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Maria. No worries, thanks, Connor. Bye.